Hello, and welcome to episode 005 of the Focused on Freelance Instructional Design podcast. And today's episode is going to be super helpful for you if you're curious about the different job roles and specialties that you can focus on in your instructional design career. Because today's episode is about instructional designer job titles and entry level e learning development jobs. So let's get started. Welcome to the Focused on Freelance Instructional Design podcast, where each and every week, you'll get proven practical tips and advice from a teacher who successfully transitioned to freelance instructional design while working full time as a single mom. And now here's your host, Crystal Osterberg. Hello, and you're listening to the Focus on Freelance Instructional Design podcast. I'm Crystal Osterberg, and in today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about instructional designer job titles, entry-level e-learning development jobs, But before we begin, I'll be starting off each episode with an instructional design freelancer tool of the week. And this week's freelancer tool of the week is called Camtasia. Instructional videos are usually the most popular and engaging forms of content for most training programs, e-learning projects, and team communication. But if you aren't used to creating your own videos, it can be somewhat of a daunting task. There's producing, editing, camera equipment, audio equipment, and then distributing the content to think about. From my own personal experience, I had not done any video editing or producing at all before preparing for my instructional design degree. Camtasia is an all-in-one screen screen recorder and video editor. From screen recording for adding video, and audio guidance to job aids, supplemental learning material, and more. Being one of the very first tools that I bought when I started instructional design, I found this tool to be very easy to learn as a beginner in video production. And I've been using the tool regularly for years now. Camtasia is definitely a great asset to have in your toolbox as a freelance instructional designer. All right, now let's move on to the main topic of today's episode. There are many different roles and specialties that you can partake in in instructional design that you may not have been aware of. And from my own personal experience, it's much easier to find freelance or contract instructional design roles as opposed to full-time positions. If you're an instructional designer or looking to get into the field, you might actually prefer freelance work as it gives you more flexibility, variety, and the ability to choose the types of projects that you complete. In addition, it's also easier to land shorter one-off contracts in the beginning before landing more stable positions. If you're someone who's currently in the process of switching careers and transitioning to becoming an instructional designer. However, when looking for freelance or contract positions, it's important that you have a clear understanding of the defined job roles that are out there. And as you dive deeper into your career, you will probably discover even more positions that you didn't even know existed previously. So today I'm going to talk with you about some practical and profitable instructional designer roles that you might want to look into based on your work experience. And hopefully this list will help you discover some ideas that you might not have thought of before and hopefully a role where you can possibly tie your skills and interests together. Now, what exactly is the role of an instructional designer, which is also referred to as a learning designer. Instructional designers are integral and necessary to the success of the e-learning space. They design e-learning courses or specific projects with the help of authoring tools. They use theory and research to design and develop materials that teach and train specific groups of people from kids in school to professionals in the workplace. Instructional designers work with subject matter experts, a diverse range of formats, and multimedia production platforms. Their focus skills include writing, visualizing, listening, communicating, problem solving, researching, and working with tools and tech. Now, instructional designers do have a strong skill set in technology, especially with how much training is delivered remotely these days. 
But while the main role of an instructional designer is all about creating a practical and transferable learning experience for the learners, e-learning developers are usually the ones that help make the instructional designer's visions come to life by meeting the needs of the projects through the use of tools. An e-learning developer's focus skills includes visualizing, communicating, problem solving, and working with tools and tech. So in more simple terms, instructional designers will usually design the outline of a course or project, conduct any necessary research, and determine what types of skills or knowledge the learners need to know. Whereas the e-learning developer then takes the ideas and recommendations given by the instructional designer and creates the actual instructional materials. However, it's also common that one person completes both these job roles, which can often cause confusion among novice or new instructional designers. But there are even other slightly different positions and approaches to designing learning that are popping up in recent years that you might also want to take into consideration and be on the lookout for when considering or currently on the search for a new job role or specialty. As technology is continuing to become the driving force in training employees, roles such as UI and UX designers are becoming more and more common. A UI or UX designer's job is to design all the screens that a learner will move through. UI designers create the visual elements as well as their interactive properties that prompt and facilitate these processes. The most important job of a UI designer is to work with the idea of human behavior in mind, thinking about how the learner's mind works. UI or UX designers must be creative in nature with the ability to put themselves in the learner's shoes, anticipating on what they should expect on every screen. A UI, or should I say user interface designer's focus skills include communicating, problem solving, empathy, creativity, visualizing, and working with tools and tech. If you're one who's more interested in research, conducting assessments, and learning about new and innovative technology tools, you might also want to consider the role of an LMS administrator. LMS administrators take part in practically every part of the LMS or learning management systems implementation process, from researching and determining the best tool for the job to ensuring the system is maintained and running smoothly to collecting important feedback from the learners. An LMS administrator is also often in charge of giving continuous support to the learners as needed. They also train others in its use, creating standards for the many detailed issues that arise, and they troubleshoot technical problems. Though at times they might even take on the role of creating the content, their primary role is in developing and upkeeping the e-learning course in itself. An LMS administrator's job is to ensure that everything runs smoothly and that everyone works together cohesively and is aware of the primary goal. An LMS administrator's focus skills include planning, researching, assessing, and working with tools and tech. Now, those are the only roles that I'm going to go into detail with you today, but I do want to mention other growing positions in instructional design, such as an accessibility expert an HTML developer, a copy editor, project manager, and assessment writers. If you think you might be interested in one of these positions or would like to learn more about them, just do a quick Google search. So you probably have a better understanding now as to some of the different types of roles that are available as opposed to what we call the typical instructional designer. But the most important thing is that you understand how to actually land a job and stand out amongst the crowd in this continuously, rapidly growing career field. Making the transition to instructional design can be intimidating to say the least. But you took the first step in what it takes by listening to this podcast episode. All you need now is the knowledge, resources, and tools to help you learn the skills of your desired position. You just need a solid plan to put in the work. Following a set path will give you the peace of mind and confidence to actually succeed in making the transition to instructional design and your own instructional design business. 
But don't worry, that's where the ID Plan Academy comes in. The ID Plan Academy lays out concrete steps to take before starting your own freelance instructional design career. All right, that's it from me for this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you enjoyed this week's episode, be sure to hit the five-star review button and let me know how much you enjoy the show. Not only will that let me know that I'm doing a good job, but it will also help me reach more people, make more of an impact, and help others on their freelance instructional design success. I sure would appreciate it if you have a chance to leave a review. Be sure to let me know on social, in the Freelance Instructional Designers Mastermind Facebook group, or in the Freelance Instructional Designers Mastermind LinkedIn group, and make sure you leave the at symbol before the name so that I can thank you personally. I always read my reviews and comments individually, and I really appreciate them, and I appreciate you. And hopefully you'll join me next week for another episode of the Focused Freelance Instructional Design Podcast. Thanks for checking out e-learning and instructional design for beginners. Please take one second to like, subscribe, and comment anything below.